Hi, this is Misha. We're just going to do a little quick video comparing the Israeli Galil to the Finnish Valmet. These get compared a lot. One definitely led to the other. This is a uh, late 60s import Valmet M62S. It has the military furniture, fixed tube stock, milled receiver. It is chambered for 762 by 39. It feeds from standard AK mags. It has a 16 inch hammer forged but not chrome line barrel. It is internally an AK. It's just that Finland did their own thing with the furniture. But if you looked inside the trigger group, the bolt group, it's AK. <laughs> Comparing this to the Israeli Galil, this is an original parts kit issued by the IDF. This is the ARM variant. This is the common version they used. This receiver is an original receiver that was saw cut and then re-welded by Tin Galil, Jeff Miller. We have a folding tubular steel stock, milled receiver, 18 inch chrome lined hammer forge barrel, bipod as I said. And this one is chambered for 223, 556 NATO. And it feeds from its own proprietary magazines, which are extremely similar to the AK-74 mag. These guns do have a good chunk in common. It has often been said that the early Galils were built on Valmet receivers. While you can see the receivers and how they are extremely similar, same type of lightning cut here, same lightning cut under the chamber here, Keep in mind these were for 7.6239 and these for 4.556. There's never been an evidence that this happened, but it's very clear that this receiver was a copy of this receiver. There's just, there's just no way it wasn't. The earliest Galil prototypes, were they did try a stamped receiver, but they felt the stamping wasn't strong enough for 5.56 NATO. Keep in mind that 7.6239 is a lower velocity lower pressure cartridge compared to 5.56. Back in the 60s, 5.56 was a, was a pretty hot little smoking round, small diameter, high velocity. Whereas 7.6239 is a large diameter, eh, moderate velocity. I mean, it's, it's definitely a modern cartridge, but it's not blank batter, obviously, but compared to this, it is traveling slower. And it has much more of an arc to it, whereas 5.56 is a straighter shooting gun. Well, starting from the buttstock, that's just how we're holding them, they're quite different. The standard Galil has a folding tubular steel stock, folds to the right side. They did make a fixed stock for it, but that was not military issue. The military guns always had a, a folding stock. The Valmet, on the other hand, has a fixed stock made of tubular steel. Both of these do have kind of shrink wrapping here for a cheek rest. So you're not resting against bare steel. For the, in the case of the Israelis, the heat of the desert. In the case of the fin, Finnish gun, the cold of the north. So either way, you would not want to plant your cheek against it if you could help it. This is a fixed stock. They did do a side folding version. This has a large storage compartment. Essentially, this whole tube is hollow and you can store quite a large cleaning kit in it. This has no storage in it. Obviously, it's just tubular. The rear sights are very similar in the general sense. They're both mounted on the dust cover. They both have protective ears. But this is a simple two position flip sight here. And this is a more AK style adjustable ladder. Also, the night sights in the rear are different. This has flip-up night sights. You would flip this up and then put your rear sight to the middle position to use them. 
This on the other hand, to use your rear night sight, you would flip over here and then use the night sight that way. So very different rear sight, although its base is very similar and both are mounted to a sheet steel top cover. The pistol grips are different. This is the early style bicycle grip. It has a steel reinforcing sleeve. Later they would go to more conventional style grip though in the late 60s, early 70s. The Galil grip is just a piece of plastic, no steel inside, and it's basically an elongated AK grip. The safeties are similar. They're both AK style safeties. However, the Valmet has nothing on this side here. You can see. The Galil, let me flip this critter around. Galil has a thumb safety here. Now, a lot of times people call this as an ambidextrous safety. It's not. This is a right hand safety. If you're a left handed person and try to grab this grip and use it, it's hugely uncomfortable. The reason they did this on this side and still left the one on the right is the right side also acts as a dust cover on your action. So it lets you still use the right side safety as a dust cover, but gave you the option of also using the left side. Looking at the left side of the receivers, the Valmet has a, a second lightning cut here, similar to the one on the other side. Whereas most Galils have a similar cutout, but this is a scope mount. Some of the Israeli guns would not have a scope mount here, and virtually none of the South African R4 and R5s would not. Moving along, <clears throat> excuse me, this has wooden panel handguards that accommodate the bipod. This has the early style cheese grater handguard. They attach a little bit differently, but they're still very similar. They both have exposed gas tubes that are ported. Yeah, of course, that thing's going to be right where I want to show. <laughs> the front sights are very similar. We have a hooded post here and a hooded post here, although the one on the Galil is a larger hood. And also it has a hole in the top for adjustment. The Valmets does not. They are both windage adjustable by drifting screws. They have the same style of sling bar on them. The Galil mounts its bipod and bayonet lug here as part of the block. Other Galils will either not have a bipod, excuse me, a uh, well, they won't have a bipod lug either, but they won't have a bayonet lug there, or it'll be a separate ring on the barrel. So there's a few different styles of how that works. We come out here to a birdcage flash hider based on the M16. It is different. It's, it's an Israeli pattern, but it's very, di very much like the M16A1 birdcage. Later Galils would use more of a ported style, and there's a few different types of that as well. This can double as a grenade launcher. There's a ring here. The Valmet. We do not have a bayonet lug under the gas block. Instead, it's under the three-prong open-ended flash hider. And it is not a standard M16 M7 or M9 lug like the Israeli, it takes a Fiskars bayonet, which is sort of like the one used on the Czech VZ58. It slides on, it's a different style, and it doesn't have a ring. Again, this has a 16 inch barrel. That Galil has the standard 18 inch. They would do multiple different barrel lengths for the Galil, but 18 was the standard used by the IDF. <laughs> The IDF would also have some 13 inches and some micro galils, which had all kinds of different barrel lengths from uh, just under eight inches all the way up to 11 and beyond. 
and for the U.S. market, I, IW, or IMI would produce 16 inches as well. Flipping this back over, the Galil has an upswept charging handle, so it can be accessed from either side and also not stick out and get in the shooter's back if he's slinging it or just, you know, keep it out of the way. The Valmet has a more traditional AK style. And that's pretty much the external walkthrough. The last thing, the mag catch trigger guard, very similar. This has an extended shelf down here to protect it and a lip on the side. This has very much the same. So even though the mags are different, the catches are pretty much the same. We'll look at the mags themselves. This is a Valmet pouch. Holds three. This is standard loadout. These are AK mags essentially. 30 rounds made of steel. With the only real difference being this lanyard loop on the bottom. The Galil mags. I'm going to set these in the floor to get them in my way because I'm going to need more, some more space in a sec. Had two standard capacities in 223. This is an IDF pouch as well. Get out of my way. This is the standard 35 round capacity. Note it is 35 and not 30. And note that it looks a lot like... The body looks a lot like an M16, but the lockup and everything else is very AK. So they kind of a synthesis of the two. Now for the guns being used as a light machine gun, they also made a extended 50 round, which is quite long and they were reliable when they worked, but they were e more easily dented. And the major problem is they would, uh, they would monopod the gun because they were so long. So I think most of the time they issued 35, but they did make these pouches and they did have 50 rounds that were in military service and that was kind of using the Galil as a uh, LMG, a saw. That's the thing about the original Galil. It was kind of meant to be both a LMG and a assault rifle. Before that, they had been using two different versions of the FAL. A light barrel is a assault rifle or battle rifle, I should say. And a heavy barrel is a, a machine gun. And so they were kind of trying to do a, a two-in-one with this gun. And um, it really didn't work out that great for them. It was kind of heavy to be used as a assault rifle and really too light to be used as, a, as an LMG. But that's for another day. Some space I have here for a walk off. There we go. Let's do a, a basic field strip here. This is the Valmet. It comes apart like any other AK. Got a recoil spring here. Very AK. As you can see, the trigger group internals, very much like an AK. Now this is where it gets a little different. While the bolt group is very AK, we have a long stroke piston, two lug rotating bolt, typical carrier. We do have this, uh, these fingers in here to guide it during the tube, in the tube. The way the gas tube comes off, it's only held in in the front by the gas block and the back by the dust cover. So when you pull the bolt group out, it comes with. So that's a little different. You know, the regular AK, uh, AK gas tube is, uh, is fixed in. You have to uh, use a tool to remove it. So this is the disassembled Valmet. Putting the safety on so the trigger doesn't actually go forward. Very AK internal, as I said. As for the Galil, we're going to have a very similar setup. 
Same AK disassembly. This one's tight or tighter. There we go. Very basically the exact same dust cover. Mounts quite tight, so you can have your rear sight on it. The recoil spring is similar, but a little bit different. Mostly it has this longer flange in the back to retain it. Bolt group. And the gas tube, same idea. These are not interchangeable, but very similar. Bolt group, similar. Except for, of course, the cocking handle. As you can see, very much AK. And looking inside, AK. This has a Tapco group in it just because of being a symbol by Jeff, but the original Galil trigger group looks like the Valmet. In fact, it, the original Galil has a straight trigger. Later, IMI would go to more of a curved trigger like this one, but they would use the wide, uh, wide style and the double hook style. The semi-auto Valmet has one of the hooks cut off for some reason. That's what they did in the 60s as part of the semi-auto conversion. So as you can see, mechanically, internally, very similar, even if parts are not interchangeable. And that's thanks in great because of the, uh, the different calibers. All right, back together now. So in conclusion, you can see that there are quite a few similarities and some differences. It is clear that the Galil was heavily inspired by the Valmet, but it is its own creation. It has some elements that um, are its own. For example, the pistol grip and the buttstock are inspired by the FN FAL paratrooper. The rear sight is definitely inspired by the M16. As is the bayonet lug, of course, and flash rider. The bipod system, hand guards, carry handle, charging handle shape and all that, safety, left side type safety, are pretty much all its own. And of course we've got the underlying Kalashnikov influence. That's one thing to point out. While the Valmet inspired the Galil in a lot of ways, keep in mind that, um, that Israel captured a lot of Russian Kalashnikovs fighting with uh, the its its enemies during several wars, starting really with the uh, the, the yeah I don't know the the Suez Crisis. There weren't many AKs, but by the the Six Days War and all the conflicts, and then the Yom Kippur War, they captured a lot of AKs. And the earliest Galil prototypes were nothing more than AKs. They break, basically Frankenized. They did they they took the AK and they they did different things to it. So since these both started off as a derivation of the Kalashnikov, it's not surprising at all. So you really have to attribute the action not to the Valmet and the Galil, but really the, the, the base AK. And of course, then again, the caliber itself, 5.56, is definitely more M16. They didn't go with the 7.62-39. So some similarities, quite a few, and some differences, quite a bit. And these, of course, are examples of the standard military issue. Valmet would make many variations of their gun. They would do 223, uh, they would do 308, they would do 222 amongst other calibers. They would do the M71, the M76, the M78, the M82, different versions of, including a bullpup and a heavy barrel. Go, uh, IMI would do several versions of the Glil as well, but not quite as many. They would do, of course, different versions of 223 with uh, the 18 inch barrel, they would do a, a, a sniper, a DMR version in 308. They would do several rifle versions in 308 as well. They would do a fixed stock, as I originally said. They would do some thumb holes later for uh, US, uh, US import. The AR and ARM had the 18 inch barrel. The SAR had a 13 inch barrel. And the micro Galil is interesting. It has a lot of variations. The shortest barrel length I know of is about 7.8 uh, inches. 8.3 was standard, 
but they did do some 11 inch versions as well and I've even seen some 16 inch barrels for the uh, micro Galil but I don't know the story there most micros are in 223 but they did some 308s IMI today IWI has been very interested in marking the Galil while the IDF used it in the 70s and 80s and into the 90s this gun increasingly became more and more for export. They did design it for themselves in the late 60s, early 70s, but then USA gave them lots of uh, M16s and CAR 15s amongst others. So they kind of repurposed this. Whereas the Valmet was designed by in Finland and has been used mostly by their own military who's purchased large numbers and this is still standard issue today although they have some updated versions known as the RK62M and there is a, um, a modern version called the RK95TP but only about 20,000 were made and they're essentially issued for special forces only. Most of the regular Finnish FDF standard forces have the uh, RK62 and some some guys. So kind of different ideas a few foreign countries did purchase the Valmet, but in relatively small numbers. Finland has never been a big exporter of military guns. When they do export, it tends to be more sporting hunting type guns. Whereas IMI, today IWI, has exported a lot of military guns from the Uzi through the Galil and today into the Tavor series. Yeah, I thought we'd just kind of compare these two. Thought it might be fun. If you have any questions or comments, please share them below. If you want to share pictures of your own Galils or Valmets, that'd be, that'd be great too. They're both guns that I like talking about. They're both really, really neat guns and love the history behind them. If you like the video, please click like. If you haven't already subscribed, and you could, we'd really appreciate that. Every, every new viewer and every existing viewer, we, we greatly value. Well, this is Misha. Please tune in again next time for more hopefully unique and interesting videos. We'll catch you then.